This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording done by Chip in Tampa, Florida, on January 5th, 2006. Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman Chapter 29 to think of time to think of time all that retrospection to think of today and the ages continued henceforward have you guessed you yourself would not continue have you dreaded these earth beetles have you feared the future would be nothing to you is today nothing is the beginningless past nothing? If the future is nothing, they are surely just as nothing. To think that the sun rose in the east, that men and women were flexible, real, alive, that everything was alive. To think that you and I did not see, feel, think, nor bear our part. To think that we are now here and bear our part. Not a day passes, not a minute or second, without an accouchement. Not a day passes, not a minute or second, without a corpse. The dull nights go over, and the dull days also. The soreness of lying so much in bed goes over. The physician after long putting off gives the silent and terrible look for an answer the children come hurried and weeping and the brothers and sisters are sent for medicines stand unused on the shelf the camphor smell has long pervaded the rooms the faithful hand of the living does not desert the hand of the dying the twitching lips press lightly on the forehead of the dying. The breath ceases, and the pulse of the heart ceases. The corpse stretches on the bed, and the living look upon it. It is palpable, as the living are palpable. The living look upon the corpse with their eyesight, but without eyesight lingers a different living, and looks curiously on the corpse. To think the thought of death merged in the thought of materials, to think of all these wonders of city and country and others taking great interest in them, and we taking no interest in them. To think how eager we are in building our houses, to think others shall be just as eager, and we quite indifferent. I see one building the house that serves him a few years, or seventy or eighty years at most. I see one building the house that serves him longer than that. Slow moving and black lines creep over the whole earth. They never cease. They are the burial lines. He that was president was buried. And he that is now president shall surely be buried. A reminiscence of the vulgar fate, a frequent sample of the life and death of workmen, each after his kind. Cold dash of waves at the ferry wharf, posh and ice in the river, half-frozen mud in the streets, a gray, discouraged sky overhead, the short, last daylight of December. A hearse and stages, the funeral of an old Broadway stage driver, the cortege, mostly drivers. Steady the trot to the cemetery, duly rattles the death bell. The gate is passed, the new dug grave is halted at, the living alight, the hearse uncloses, the coffin is passed out, lowered and settled. The whip is laid on the coffin. 
the earth is swiftly shoveled in. The mound above is flattened with the spades. Silence. A minute. No one moves or speaks. It is done. He is decently put away. Is there anything more? He was a good fellow, free-mouthed, quick-tempered, not bad-looking, ready with life or death for a friend, fond of women, gambled, ate hearty, drank hearty, had known what it was to be flush, grew low-spirited toward the last, sickened, and was helped by a contribution, died aged forty-one years, and that was his funeral. Thumb extended, finger uplifted, apron, cape, glove, strap, wet weather clothes, whip carefully chosen, boss, spotter, starter, hostler, somebody loafing on you, you loafing on somebody, headway, man before and man behind, good day's work, bad day's work, pet stock, mean stock, first out, last out, turning in at night. To think that these are so much and so nigh to other drivers, and he there takes no interest in them. The markets, the government, the working man's wages, to think what to count they are through our days and nights. To think that other working men will make just as great account of them, yet we make little or no account. The vulgar and the refined, what you call sin and what you call goodness, to think how wide a difference. To think the difference will still continue to others, yet we lie beyond the difference. To think how much pleasure there is. Do you enjoy yourself in the city? Or engaged in business? Or planning a nomination and election? Or with your wife and family? Or with your mother and sisters? or in womanly housework, or the beautiful maternal cares. These also flow onward to others, you and I flow onward, but in due time you and I shall take less interest in them. Your farm, profits, crops, to think how engrossed you are, to think that there will still be farms, profits, crops, yet for you. Of what avail? What will be will be well for what is well. To take interest is well, and to not take interest shall be well. The domestic joys, the daily housework or business, the building of houses are not phantasms. They have weight, form, location. Farms, Profits, crops, markets, wages, government are none of them phantasms. The difference between sin and goodness is no delusion. The earth is not an echo. Man and his life and all the things of his life are well considered. You are not thrown to the winds. You gather certainly and safely around yourself, 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 yourself for ever and ever. It is not to diffuse you that you were born of your mother and father. It is to identify you. It is not that you should be undecided, but that you should be decided. Something long preparing and formless is arrived and formed in you. You are henceforth secure, whatever comes or goes. The threads that were spun are gathered, the weft crosses the warp, the pattern is systematic. The preparations have every one been justified, the orchestra have sufficiently tuned their instruments, the baton has given the signal, the guest was coming. He waited long. He is now housed. He is one of those who are beautiful and happy. He is one of those that to look upon and be with is enough. 
The law of the past cannot be eluded. The law of the present and future cannot be eluded. The law of the living cannot be eluded. It is eternal. The law of promotion and transformation cannot be eluded. The law of heroes and good doers cannot be eluded. The law of drunkards, informers, mean persons, not one iota thereof can be eluded. Slow moving and black lines go ceaselessly over the earth. Northerner goes carried, and southerner goes carried, and they on the Atlantic side, and they on the Pacific, and they between, and all through the Mississippi country, and all over the earth. The great masters and cosmos are well as they go. The heroes and good doers are well. The known leaders and inventors, the rich owners and pious and distinguished may be well, but there is more account than that. There is strict account of all. The interminable hordes of the ignorant and wicked are not nothing. The barbarians of Africa and Asia are not nothing. The perpetual successions of shallow people are not nothing as they go. Of and in all these things I have dreamed that we are not to be changed so much, nor the law of us changed. I have dreamed that heroes and good doers shall be under the present and past law, and that murderers, drunkards, liars shall be under the present and past law. For I have dreamed that the law they are under now is enough. And I have dreamed that the purpose and essence of the known life, the transient, is to form and decide identity for the unknown life, the permanent. If all came but to ashes of dung, if maggots and rats ended us, then alarm, for we are betrayed. Then, indeed, suspicion of death. Do you suspect death? If I were to suspect death, I should die now. Do you think I could walk pleasantly and well-suited toward annihilation? Pleasantly and well-suited I walk. Whither I walk I cannot define, but I know it is good. The whole universe indicates that it is good. The past and present indicate that it is good. How beautiful and perfect are the animals! How perfect the earth and the minutest thing upon it! What is called good is perfect. And what is called bad is just as perfect. The vegetables and minerals are all perfect, and the imponderable fluids perfect. Slowly and surely they have passed on to this, and slowly and surely they yet pass on. I swear, I think now that every thing without exception has an eternal soul. The trees have, rooted in the ground. The weeds and the sea have, the animals. I swear, I think there is nothing but immortality. That, the exquisite scheme, is for it. And the nebulous float is for it. And the cohering is for it. And all preparation is for it. And identity is for it. And life and materials are all together for it. Book 30 Whispers of Heavenly Death Darest thou now, O soul? Darest thou now, O soul, walk out with me toward the unknown region? Where neither ground is for the feet, nor any path to follow. No map there, 
nor guide, nor voice sounding, nor touch of human hand, nor face with blooming flesh, nor lips, nor eyes are in that land. I know it not, O soul, nor dost thou. All is a blank before us. All waits undreamed of in that region, that inaccessible land. Till when the ties loosen, all but the ties eternal, time and space, nor darkness, gravitation, sense, nor any bounds bounding us, then we burst forth, we float in time and space, O soul, prepared for them, equal, equipped at last, O joy, O fruit of all, them to fulfill, O soul. Whispers of Heavenly Death Whispers of heavenly death murmured I hear, Labial gossip of night, sibilant corals, Footsteps gently ascending, mystical breezes wafted soft and low, Ripples of unseen rivers, tides of a current flowing, forever flowing, Or is it the plashing of tears, the measureless waters, of human tears. I see, just see skyward, great cloud masses mournfully, slowly they roll, silently swelling and mixing with, at times, a half-dimmed, saddened, far-off star, appearing and disappearing. Some parturition, rather, some solemn, immortal birth, on the frontiers to eyes impenetrable, some soul is passing over. Chanting the Square Deific Chanting the Square Deific, out of the one advancing, out of the sides, out of the old and new, out of the square eternally divine, solid, Four-sided, and all sides needed, From this side Jehovah am I, Old Brahm I, and I Saturnius am. Not time affects me, I am time, Old, modern as any, Unpersuadable, relentless, Executing righteous judgments as the earth, The father, the brown old Kronos with law. Aged beyond computation, yet never knew, Ever with those mighty laws rolling. Relentless I forgive no man, whoever sins dies. I will have that man's life. Therefore let none expect mercy. Have the seasons, gravitation, the appointed days mercy? No more have I. But as the seasons and gravitation and as all the appointed days that forgive not, I dispense from this side judgments inexorable, without the least remorse. Consolator most mild, the promised one advancing, With gentle hand extended, the mightier God am I, Foretold by prophets and poets in their most rapt prophecies and poems, from this side, lo, the Lord Christ gazes, lo, Hermes' eye, lo, mine is Hercules' face, all sorrow, labor, suffering, I, tallying it, absorb in myself. Many times have I been rejected, taunted, put in prison, and crucified, and many times shall be again. All the world have I given up for my dear brothers and sisters' sake, For the soul's sake, wandering my way through the homes of men, Rich or poor, with the kiss of affection, For I am affection. I am the cheer-bringing God, With hope and all-enclosing charity, With indulgent words as to children, with fresh and sane words, mine only, young and strong, I pass, Knowing well I am destined myself to an early death. 
but my charity has no death. My wisdom dies not, neither early nor late, and my sweet love bequeathed here and elsewhere never dies. Aloof, dissatisfying, plotting revolt, comrade of criminals, brother of slaves, crafty, despised, a drudge, ignorant, with sudra face and worn brow, black, but in the depths of my heart, proud as any. Lifted now, and always against whoever scorning assumes to rule me, morose, full of guile, full of reminiscences, brooding with many wiles, though it was thought I was baffled and dispelled, and my wiles dug. But that will never be. Defiant, I, Satan, still live, still utter words in new lands duly appearing, and old ones also, permanent here from my side, warlike, equal with any, real as any, nor time nor change shall ever change me or my word. Santa Spirita, breather, life, beyond the light, lighter than light, beyond the flames of hell, joyous, leaping easily above hell, beyond paradise, perfumed solely with mine own perfume, including all life on earth, touching, including God, including Saviour and Satan, ethereal, pervading all, for without me, what were all? What were God? Essence of forms, life of the real identities, permanent, positive, namely the unseen, life of the great round world, the sun and stars, and of man, I, the general soul, here the square finishing, the solid, I, the most solid, breathe my breath also through these songs. Of Him I Love Day and Night Of Him I Love Day and Night I dreamed, I heard He was dead. And I dreamed I went where they had buried Him I Love, but He was not in that place. And I dreamed I wandered searching among burial places to find him. And I found that every place was a burial place. The houses full of life were equally full of dead, this house is now. The streets, the shipping, the places of amusement, the Chicago, Boston, Philadelphia, the Manhattan, they were all full of the dead as of the living, and fuller. Oh, vastly fuller of the dead than of the living. And what I dreamed I will henceforth tell to every person and age, and I stand henceforth bound to what I dreamed. And now I am willing to disregard burial places, and dispense with them. And if the memorials of the dead were put up indifferently everywhere, even in the room where I eat or sleep, I should be satisfied, and if the corpse of any one I love, or if my own corpse be duly rendered to powder and poured in the sea, I shall be satisfied, or if it be distributed to the winds, I shall be satisfied. Yet, yet, ye downcast hours. Yet, yet, ye downcast hours, I know ye also, weights of lead, how ye clog and cling at my ankles. Earth to a chamber of mourning turns. I hear the o'erweening, mocking voice. Matter is conqueror. Matter, triumphant only, continues onward. Despairing cries float ceaselessly toward me, the call of my nearest lover putting forth, alarmed, uncertain, the sea I am quickly to sail. Come, tell me, come tell me where I am speeding.
tell me my destination. I understand your anguish, but I cannot help you. I approach, hear, behold the sad mouth, the look out of the eyes, your mute inquiry. Whither I go from the bed I recline on, come tell me. Old age, alarmed, uncertain, a young woman's voice appealing to me for comfort, a young man's voice. Shall I not escape? As if a phantom caressed me. As if a phantom caressed me, I thought I was not alone walking here by the shore. But the one I thought was with me, as now I walk by the shore, the one I love that caressed me, as I lean and look through the glimmering light, that one has utterly disappeared, and those who appear that are hateful and mock me. Assurances I need no assurances. I am a man who is preoccupied of his own soul. I do not doubt that from under the feet and beside the hands and the face I am cognizant of are now faces I am not cognizant of. Calm and actual faces. I do not doubt but the majesty and beauty of the world are latent in any iota of the world. I do not doubt I am limitless, and that the universes are limitless. In vain I try to think how limitless. I do not doubt that the orbs and the systems of orbs play their swift sports through the air on purpose and that I shall one day be eligible to do as much as they, and more than they. I do not doubt that temporary affairs keep on, and millions of years. I do not doubt interiors have their interiors, and exteriors have their exteriors, and that eyesight has another eyesight, and that the hearing another hearing, and the voice another voice. I do not doubt that the passionately wept deaths of young men are provided for, and that the deaths of young women and the deaths of little children are provided for. Did you think life was so well provided for? And death, the purport of all life, is not well provided for? I do not doubt that wrecks at sea, no matter what the horrors of them, no matter whose wife, child, Husband, father, lover has gone down are provided for to the minutest points. I do not doubt that whatever can possibly happen anywhere at any time is provided for in the inherences of things. I do not think life provides for all and for time and space, but I believe heavenly death provides for all. Quicksand Years Quicksand years that whirl me I know not whither. Your schemes, politics, fail, lines give way, substances mock and elude me. Only the theme I sing, the great and strong possessed soul, eludes not. One self must never give way. That is the final substance. That, out of all, is sure. Out of politics, triumphs, battles, life, what at last finally remains? When shows break up, what but one self is sure? That music always round me. That music always round me, unceasing, unbeginning, yet long untaught, I did not hear. But now the chorus I hear, and am elated. A tenor, strong, ascending with power and health, with glad notes of daybreak I hear.
a soprano at intervals sailing buoyantly over the tops of immense waves, a transparent bass shuddering lusciously under and through the universe, the triumphant tutti, the funeral wailings of sweet flutes and violins, and all these I fill myself with. I hear not the volumes of sound merely. I am moved by the exquisite meaning. I listen to the different voices winding in and out, striving, contending with fiery vehemence to excel each other in emotion. I do not think the performers know themselves, but now I think begin to know them. What Ship Puzzled at Sea what ship puzzled at sea cons for the true reckoning? Or, coming in to avoid the bars and follow the channel a perfect pilot needs? Here, sailor, here, ship, take aboard the most perfect pilot, Whom in a little boat, putting off and rowing, I hailing you offer. A Noiseless, Patient Spider a noiseless, patient spider I marked where, on a little promontory, it stood isolated, marked how to explore the vast, vacant surrounding. It launched forth filament, filament, filament out of itself, ever unreeling them, ever tirelessly speeding them. And you, O oh my soul, where you stand, surrounded, Detached in measureless oceans of space, Ceaselessly musing, venturing, throwing, Seeking the spheres to connect them, Till the bridge you will need be formed, Till the ductile anchor hold, Till the gossamer thread you fling catch somewhere, O oh my soul. O LIVING ALWAYS, ALWAYS DYING O LIVING ALWAYS, ALWAYS DYING, O THE BURIALS OF ME, PAST AND PRESENT, O ME, WHILE I STRIDE AHEAD, VISIBLE, MATERIAL, IMPERIOUS AS EVER, O ME, WHAT I WAS FOR YEARS, NOW DEAD, I LAMENT NOT. I am content. Oh, to disengage myself from those corpses of me, Which I turn and look back at where I cast them, To pass on, oh, living, always living, And leave the corpses behind. To one shortly to die, from all the rest I single you out, Having a message for you, you are to die. Let others tell you what they please, I cannot prevaricate, I am exact and merciless, but I love you. There is no escape for you. Softly I lay my right hand upon you, You must feel it. I do not argue. I bend my head close and half envelop it. I sit quietly by. I remain faithful. I am more than nurse, more than parent or neighbor. I absolve you from all except yourself, spiritual bodily, that is eternal. You yourself will surely escape. The corpse you will leave will be but excrementious. The sun bursts through in unlooked-for directions. Strong thoughts fill you, in confidence you smile. You forget you are sick, as I forget you are sick. You do not see the medicines, you do not mind the weeping friends. I am with you. I exclude others from you. There is nothing to be commiserated. I do not commiserate. I congratulate you.
Night on the Prairies Night on the prairies, the supper is over, the fire on the ground burns low, the wearied emigrants sleep wrapped in their blankets. I walk by myself, I stand and look at the stars, which I think now never realized before. Now I absorb immortality and peace. I admire death and test propositions. How plenitous, how spiritual, how resume! The same old man and soul, the same old aspirations, and the same content. I was thinking the day most splendid, till I saw what the not day exhibited. I was thinking this globe enough, till there sprang out so noiseless around me myriads of other globes. Now, while the great thoughts of space and eternity fill me, I will measure myself by them, and now touched with the lives of other globes, arrived as far along as those of the earth, or in waiting to arrive or passed on farther than those of earth. I henceforth no more ignore them than I ignore my own life, or the lives of the earth, arrived as far as mine, or waiting to arrive. I see now that life cannot exhibit all to me, as the day cannot. I see that I am to wait, for what will be exhibited by death. Thought As I sit with others at a great feast, suddenly, while the music is playing, to my mind, whence it comes I know not, spectral in a mist of a wreck of sea, of certain ships, how they sail from port with flying streamers and wafted kisses and that is the last of them, of the solemn and murky mystery about the fate of the President, of the flower of the marine science of fifty generations foundered off the northeast coast and going down, of the steamship Arctic going down, of the veiled tableau women gathered together on deck, heroic, pale, waiting the moment that draws so close. Oh, the moment, a huge sob, a few bubbles, the white foam spurting up, and then the women are gone, sinking there while the passionless wet flows on, and I now pondering, are those women indeed gone? Are souls drowned and destroyed so? Is only matter triumphant? THE LAST INVOCATION At the last, tenderly, from the walls of the powerful fortressed house, from the clasp of the knitted locks, from the keep of the well-closed doors, let me be wafted. Let me glide noiselessly forth, with the key of softness unlock the locks, with a whisper set ope the doors, O soul. Tenderly, be not impatient, strong is your hold, O mortal flesh. Strong is your hold, O oh love. As I Watch the Plowman Plowing As I watched the plowman plowing, Or the sower sowing the seeds, Or the harvester harvesting, I saw there too, O oh life and death, your analogies. Life, life is the tillage, and death is the harvest according. Pensive and Faltering 
pensive and faltering, The words the dead I write. For the living are the dead, Haply the only living, only real, And I the apparition, I the spectre. The end of Book 30